Young California mother beheaded in broad daylight. More after this. Hello everyone and welcome back to AG's Point of View. Where I give you my analysis of the most popular topics in the world today. Um, in today's video, we have a man who beheads the mother of his child. Before I dive into the details of the video, if you're new here, welcome. Welcome to AG's Point of View. Do me a favor, hit that subscribe button, hit that like button as well. And the more awesome, loving, and wonderful people over, similar to yourself. All my normal subscribers, thanks for coming back. I'm diving in. A man allegedly cut off a woman's head in the middle of a California street. Authorities in the San Francisco area city of San Carlos did not describe the weapon, but radio traffic described by KGL mentioned a 25-year-old woman decapitated by a sword. Mm. Investigators reportedly said they were still looking for the implement, meaning the weapon. Um, they did not identify the woman in a press statement saying they needed to identify the family. Authorities also did not name the suspect in their post, but law enforcement sources for KGO named him as Jose Solano Landetta. A man by that name does appear in the San Mateo jail records on a count of murder. Held without bail, he is scheduled for court appearance to take place Friday. San Mateo Sheriff Office did not immediately respond to a request for more information. Alright, so I'm going to uh, share an excerpt of another story um, that was actually the same story, just a different account to it, a little more information in it, and um, fill you in on the details, and um, I'll give you my analysis right after that. Alright, um... I'm just going to skip around to the main points and then we'll, we'll, we'll dig in. Um, okay, so she has a team, the news team, that came out and they were talking about, you know, the situation that took place and obviously grandma and dad was having a conversation with the news people and this is how it went down. Um, Marty Castro, the father of the victim, um, he came out saying she was an amazing girl. Um, she was an amazing woman, very stubborn, determined to raise her daughters on her own. Hmm. Okay. Karina Castro was 27 years old, got her GED, and worked as a DoorDash driver. She left behind a seven-year-old and a one-year-old daughter. She's the youngest, excuse me, she had the youngest with the man who's held for murder. 33-year-old Jose Rafael Solano Landetta, a.k.a. Rafa Solano, all right? And they had an argument, you know what I'm saying? You know, going, I guess, this is the reason why she's not here. But previously, um, I'm gonna give you a little background on him. He's a diagnosed schizophrenic on medicine. And he would use that as an excuse for his behavior. He drank excessively, and you're not supposed to do that on those kind of medications, okay? Um, the family confirms that what the investigative team learned from law enforcement sources on Thursday that Solano had been violent with Castro and she got a restraining order against him in April, but continued to interact with him. Listen, you got a situation like that, you gotta let it go. You gotta let it go. Young people out there be watching this, um, Ladies, especially in a relationship, guys violent, you're getting a restraining order. That is your red flag. Cut communication off with him and move forward. Try to be around people that's supportive of you, <clears throat> that's going to protect you, that's going to keep you safe and out of harm's way. And, you know, put your interests in the front and not in the back. Um, and then the father's also saying that there's somebody out there abusing your daughter. Don't take off, don't let it go. Don't take no for an answer. You feel responsible no matter what anyone says. I do, I understand what he's saying because as a father, you shouldn't let that go. If you know someone abusing your daughter, at the end of the day, you knock their freaking head off, all right? I'm just gonna keep it a buck with you. Somebody abusing my daughters, somebody messing with my daughters, it's gonna be hell to pay for it. That's all I know, 
all right? They my heartbeats, you know what I'm saying? I do everything I possibly can do, make sure they're safe, everything is good with them, you know what I'm saying? You know what I'm saying? You gotta go out there begging nobody. I work two and three jobs just to make sure that everything is all good with them. You know what I mean? They make my heart beat every day. Not literally, but I'm just saying, you know, that's, that's my why, you know what I'm saying? For getting up every morning and doing what I gotta do. So I trust, I trust and believe that, you know, what he's saying is true and I understand what he's saying. Now, the day before the murder, Snapchat messages between the couple got very contentious. Okay, and we have some, I don't have the actual text messages themselves, but he actually put in the story. So she threatens to tell the world that Solano was a criminal, basically, okay? And she also was going to threaten the world, threaten to tell the world, rather, about Solano's criminal record that included a rape conviction with a minor, okay? Um, you know, he, you know, did something that he shouldn't have done. It's obvious. And he got convicted for that. Now, I don't know why he was out walking the streets. I don't know why he wasn't detained, you know what I'm saying, for that. You know what I'm saying? It was, it, it could have happened and they could have, I don't know, let it go. You know what I'm saying? But at any rate, it happened. All right, she also threatened, um, so that's when he called her a snitch lip, okay? I guess that's, you know, that's what they call snitches these days, I guess. That's, the, I don't know. Um, and he warns her, you know, you F around, you'll find out. Okay, so she fires back. You wanna put a target on my back? Okay, your homie's gonna find the real you, okay? I'm going to expose you for having a sexual relationship with a man. Now, I guess he really felt some type of way about that. Like, yo, what are you doing? You know, because a lot of times, you know, when we're in a relationship with a, you know, our significant others, you know what I'm saying? We have pillow talk. Some of you, um, may understand what I'm saying, others may not. What pillow talk is, you land next to your significant other, girlfriend, your boyfriend, whatever the case may be, whatever you, you know, whatever floats your boat, you're having a conversation. And, um, you know, you're just small talking and, you know, having a good old time and letting people know about different things. Sometimes you talk about some personal things about yourself, just to be open and every, you know, and transparent, you know, what's going on with you. And you find out more information and you go from there and next thing you know, that becomes, that information that you receive now becomes a dagger that you could, you know, kind of throw back at that person when you feel like they're not giving you what you want um, or doing something, you know, that you don't really like. You know, you know, you know how couples sometimes, you know. They got a deep, dark secret. And if you don't do what I say do, I'm gonna leak it. Well, these days, everyone's leaking everything. So this is the reason why so many people are getting shot and killed all the time, okay? Um, so now, this is the crazy part. She adds, dude, go ahead and try to make, and try to take my ass out. Meaning, you soft, you're not gonna do nothing. She basically challenged him. She challenged him. So he said, okay, cool. Hours later, they had a conversation out on the street, outside of her apartment. Kids were safely in the house. Um, you know, he got real mad. He said, okay, that's cool. I'm going to the trunk. Get my weapon. Off of you. You know what I'm saying? Pull out a sword. Cut her head off. Her head comes off. It goes, in, it goes under the car. You know what I'm saying? The, her head is under her car. Like, just think about that. Just picture that. I mean, you see things like that on like medieval um, movies, sometimes games. Um, but it's crazy because 
and she was draped over the back of the actual vehicle that she had behind her car. So my man, this is the crazy part, right? Now, he goes out, he does this, leaves, right? Comes back with his homies walking down the street. I guess he told his homies what he did. He comes back, cops is right there. That's the guy, they arrest him, and the rest is history. But now, for me, why would you do something like that? Why would you come back? I don't get it. So, I don't know. This story to me is weird. Um, as, to far as, as, as to why he would come back with his homie. Like, I don't get it. I don't get that part. I'm in left field with it. Maybe you can shine some light on it. Maybe somebody knows some information out there, but I don't know. I wouldn't come back to the scene of the crime that I just committed. You get what I'm saying? This is the reason why I'm confused. But different strokes for different folks. Maybe he thought nobody was gonna be there. Maybe he thought everything was all good because he ain't shoot a gun, everything was cool, but someone obviously called the cops. The neighbors was watching. The neighbors was always watching. So if you honestly think that you, you know, your situation or what you're dealing with is not going to be viewed by the masses, think again. They got satellites in the skies. They got cameras on um, on uh, telephone poles. Um, they erect cameras out there. They got the people that's walking around. You also got people with cell phones dash cams i mean it's a camera everywhere you know what i'm saying so if you never think you was gonna get caught then you know i don't know what he was thinking you know what i'm saying but they had the audacity to go out and to kill the mother of your child just cut her head off jump like you see that and their head just drop you see that in a medieval movie you don't see that in everyday life so for the neighbor to see that i can imagine they ain't gonna be to sleep that just seeing something like that will just wig me out. You know what I'm saying? Be like, OMG. So, that's an unfortunate situation. Um, I think they have a GoFundMe page. Maybe if they do, I'll, I'll put the link in the description. That way you can go out there and donate if you want to help out with the family. You know, to help bury the young lady and, um, you know, maybe put some more money in their pockets to kind of help out raising the kids. Right now, the kids is actually um, with DHS, I believe. Yeah, the child service, you know, came and got the children. As they should, because, you know, you can't just be saying, hey, I'll take care of them. I mean, it doesn't make any sense for you to, you know, do that, cause you know they gotta check your background. You, it's a lengthy, lengthy process you gotta go through. So, you know, things like that happen, but it's an unfortunate situation that that happened to those kids. And it's good that they didn't see it, but now you gotta have that conversation with those children. Mommy and daddy's gone forever. They ain't never coming back. Mommy's dead, daddy's in prison. You probably gonna get the death penalty. Simple as that. So, what a hell of a way for a child to, you know, live. So. Prayers go up to their family. Prayers go out to them children. Um, hopefully something positive will come out of this. And I don't know. Maybe the kids can move on and do great things in life. I'm hoping and praying. So, But in the meantime, between time, if you like what you heard, please don't hesitate to hit the subscribe button down below. Hit the like button as well. It'll be more awesome loving your wonderful people over. Similar to yourself. Um, share this video with all your family members and friends. Share it on social media. Um, you know, get the word out that AG's Jesus dropping these videos, try to give you one every day. I do the best that I possibly can do. And, um, you know, hopefully we can get there and we can make it happen. So, um, come check me out on TikTok, Instagram, Twitter, and let's have a conversation. It's a crazy, crazy story and it's crazy people out there. Y'all do me a huge favor. Please be careful. Please be extra careful. Keep your head on the swivel. Don't trust every, anything you see. You know what I'm saying? And, and do, do, do your due diligence to get yourself, you know, in a, in a good space. So that way you feel comfortable in your own, you know, environment. So I thank y'all for watching. 
I will see you guys in the next episode. Peace.